Another crazy game in the Big East. This time, this really changed really at the absolute end of this one. Villanova comes out with the shock over St. John, 64-61. But this all happened towards the end of the game, Steve. This was a brilliant run by Villanova towards the end. They find a way to win the game. I mean, watching this game, you really felt that St. John's had a good hold on this one until about five minutes left in this. And there was a brilliant run by Villanova. I'm going to let you take the lead here and talk about Villanova and the beginning of this game uh, and how they found a way to win. And then we'll really dig into it. But 64-61, Villanova now 16-3. and St. John's now 14-3. and Looking at the conference standings now, Villanova now 7-1 and in the Big East. This team is for real. They are. When you have the leading scorer in the country, you have Matty Segrist in your team. Okay, you're going to be in about every game. And you talked about that Villanova run. Okay, yeah, it was 25-7 you know, for the fourth quarter. Maddie Segrist herself went on and scored the first 11 points in that run to bring it back. So when you have a player that can score like that, you're never out of it. Um, this is a really unfair comparison because Maddie Segrist plays much more in control and maybe is not as flashy. She's just a steady scorer. But she re every time I watch her play and I watch this Villanova team play, I think of Pete Maravich and the LSU teams, you know, back, you know, in the late sixties and all, because it just, I mean, LSU could be playing anybody. It didn't matter. You had Pete Maravich. So yeah, he, he could light you up for 45 or you know, 50 points. It wouldn't be a big shock or he could get 20 some odd assists. So when you have that kind of player, you're never out of it. I will say that though, even though St. John's, I think, is a more talented basketball team. And certainly back in December, we were talking about, you know, the AP rankings and I was complaining that I thought St. John's was a better team than Villanova and that they should be, you know, ranked ahead of Villanova back at that point. I mean, Villanova outworks their op opponents. And I would say for the good part of this game, even though the score didn't reflect it, I think that the Wildcats outworked the Red Storm. I wonder how many people just had the Google Pete Maravich. I hope not many. I hope not many. I hope a lot of people know that name. Maddie Segris, my God, is she good. She just, after this game, we're seeing her, by the way, just put up 30 in every game like it's nothing. I, I feel like she is, we talk about, I mean, I feel like we have 10 or 12 players in line for the National Player of the Year, but you really got to probably put her in contention. I feel like she definitely deserves to be, if not in all the nation, definitely the Big East. Speaking of the Big East, after this game, she did move into second all-time in Big East for scoring. Wow. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So <laughs> I hope, yeah, I, I don't know if she passed it. I didn't see who's in first. Uh, I actually went to look for the the rankings. I had a hard time looking for it. So if you do know who's in first place uh, in the Big East standings, let us know in the comments below. Help me out. Uh, but yeah, Maddie Segris. Wow, what a what a brilliant game by Villanova. I really thought St. John's had this game, though. Just watching mm -hmm. this one, it, it just seemed like they had a hold on this one for, I mean, really three and a half quarters. And it just came down to that last five minutes, obviously, when it matters most. Uh, and Villanova took over and, and showed why they are just behind UConn at the top of the, the Big East standings. They play such good defense. And they 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 don't let up. Okay, you look at the score and you see, okay, great. You know, Segrist had 30, 31, how many points she has. And then you look at the rest of the thing and they all – then maybe they've got eight or six, but you don't really see, you know, you can record steals, but you don't really see like forced turnovers or uh, in rebounds, even if you didn't get the rebound. I mean, maybe not have that follow-up shot be successful. You don't see those things really in the stat book. You have to watch the games really for that come to light. And I think that's why so many AP voters have been high on Villanova all year because they are just a nightmare to try to have to have to play. When you go out there, you know, like for example, okay, if you have you have an under uh an undersized roster for UConn, Villanova is gonna wear them down. So this kind of run, while not as likely against a UConn as against the St. John's. I mean, it's possible just because they just don't let up all four quarters. They do not let up. And I think that's what really makes this team, you know, so much fun to watch. I, I don't know that we'll watch them on a deep tournament run, 
Well, we're going to watch them in a fun tournament run while they're around. They're going to be in every game and, you know, guard play, guard play, guard play and defense in tournaments. That's what advances you round to round to round. So that's where I would think if you're a Villanova wildcard cat band, you've got to be really happy of, of, about your chances. Maybe not of winning the Big East, but certainly maybe doing a little bit damage come March. Yeah, if we have UConn and Villanova in the Big East Championship game right now, I think we're in for a great game. We're going to see that game at the end of the month, Villanova and UConn. Speaking of that St. John's team, because again, for three and a half quarters, they were the better team in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They shot 43% from the field, really almost 44%. They were 6 for 12 from the three-point line. They were pretty dreadful, to be honest, from from the three-throw line. Uh they, they shot 55% from that. They did great on rebounds, 43 to 30. Mm -hmm. But what was their biggest issue, Steve, was turnovers. And it seems like that's a, an issue in the Big East itself. Uh, 20 turnovers for St. John's. As I say, it's an issue for the Big East. Well, Villanova only had six. So maybe it's not an entire Big East issue because we know we talk about that all the time with the UConn squad. But 20 to six on the turnover, a minus 14 margin. Obviously, the fact that they were in this game for so long and actually being the better team in my opinion for so long is quite surprising after seeing the stat sheet There's so many turnovers Villanova just had some issues shooting early um, if you look at their stat line and how they shot from the field uh, it, it's pretty dreadful to be honest 38 percent from the field only 24 percent from the three-point line but that big run was crucial and what's got them in for that victory yeah and then I mean St. John's had four four players in double figures and I and I you know I love Ray people's games. I, I really love her game. I mean, I, I think she, she had 11 points, 11 rebounds. And she had some tough, like in traffic rebounds, you know, I mean, I, I just love her game. Uh, a lot of attention maybe goes to some of the, some of the guards, you know, some of the, you know, the more reliable, you know, ball distributor, whatever, but I just love Ray, Ray people's games. I, I just love her. I just love the way she plays basketball. Uh, I think she's going to cause trouble for any team in conference. Uh, so, again, she's not Maddie Seacrest, but I just think the way she plays the game and, the, and her presence in the paint, I think that that makes a huge difference when you're having to try to match up in St. John's. Are we really looking at teams are battling for second, third, fourth seeds in the conference? And, and I don't want to say they're just handing it over to UConn, but, I mean, practically, our coaches – maybe approaching the games against let's say like St. John's Villanova or Creighton, you know, in Villanova or when Seton Hall, who's gotten off to a really good start, plays a very similar game to Villanova. I mean, when are you playing those games a little bit more seriously than you are trying to over uh, react to playing Connecticut? I think that actually might be a good way to look at it. And I'm usually not one to, think that way i think that you obviously put every effort you can into every game but when you see a team that's still undefeated in the conference you know you obviously have to find a way to get to the top and you obviously have to beat them to get to the top so i think getting to the second seed is absolutely crucial meaning that if you can get to the second seed it means you at the very the worst, the very minimum, the only way you're seeing uconn is in the conference championship game so i think it's almost as important to get that second seed, especially with a team like UConn, who's just absolutely mowing through the Big East right now. So I would kind of actually agree with that statement, which I normally don't really like that kind of narrative, to be completely honest. I don't really like that coaching strategy, but, you know, I don't know. And again, I don't know if coaches are doing that or saying that with their teams. I highly doubt it. But just on the outside looking in, uh, I can see that being a very crucial point. Second place in the Big East, especially going into this tournament, is huge because again, you're not going to yeah. see UConn until the championship game. Right now, Villanova holds that at a seven and one uh, record. As for St. John's, let's talk about them real quick. They will face Marquette on Wednesday, seven o'clock Eastern. St. Jo John's is now five and three in the conference. Marquette's four and four, so that's a huge pivotal game uh -huh. for both of those two teams. As for Villanova. Again, we talked about them seven and one in the conference. They're going to on Tuesday face Xavier, who's seven and eleven overall. They have yet to win a game in the Big East. They are currently the worst team in the Big East right now. But then, right after that, they go through. And what my mind is the Big East gauntlet. They take on Creighton 
on Friday the 20th, 9 o'clock Eastern, Fox Sports 1. Definitely really excited for that one. Uh Um, And then Sunday the 29th, 2 o'clock p.m., they head and play UConn at UConn. So that is, I think, you know, nice little catch your breath against Xavier. Hate to say that, but it's what it seems to look like so far this season. And then they take on a nice road trip against Creighton and UConn. If they find a way to get out of this month and get some of those wins, even two of the three, I think they have a really strong chance to hold on to that two seed for the remainder of the season. I really do into February. I, you know, they made a believer of me again. You know, I, you know, we'll just add this to the growing list. We, we need to get one of those, like, you know, how that little, they had the little clock and it talks about how the national debt is racking up every day. We need to do a little <laughs> clock of our own. How many stupid things is Feck going to say during the course of the basketball season? And just kind of keep a running total up. We can get some nice over under betting going, you know, maybe, maybe get a, a sports book sponsorship and get some kind of over under line. <laughs> but okay. Is Feck going to break a hundred thousand stupid things? I mean, it would be fun, but I, what I don't mind coming out and, and making a, a statement or an opinion, but I love it when a team, shuts me up and proves me wrong. I really yeah. do. And and I also enjoy it when you guys call me to task out there. So make sure that you uh, leave your comments anytime that you're watching a video. A like and a subscribe, that doesn't suck either. But I mean, let's keep the conversation going, folks. Yeah, you guys have been sending so many comments lately that it's yeah. been so hard to catch up and reply. I absolutely love having that problem. So thank you very much. Let us know your thoughts in the comment description below. Hit like and subscribe while you're there. And thanks for watching. Slasher you.